Hi, welcome back to the shed for episode seven of the Jurg's Cup Base 6 build. And in this episode, we're gonna start working on the fretboard. So we got quite a lot of work done on the neck in the last two episodes, and it's all kind of cut to shape. And we've got our truss rod and carbon rods installed. There's a few little jobs that need finishing off on this, but I'm gonna set it to one side for the time being because there's at least one that I can't do anything about until I've got the fretboard sorted. So I'm gonna concentrate on this for a bit. And what I intend to do is to get the fret slots cut in this, get the radius put on, install the inlays, and kind of rough trim it and get it to the point where we can kind of trial fit this on. So I know then where I'm gonna be transitioning into the headstock from. However, there is a complication on this build because this guitar has a 30 inch scale length and I don't have a fret slotting template for 30 inch. And anyone who's watched a few of my builds will know, I generally use these fret scale rulers that I attach to the blank, and then I'll get them into my, my fret slotting jig and just cut them in that way. I'll still be using this bit, but I don't have one of these in the right size. So I'm gonna have to measure the fret spacing on this one by hand, which I've done before, it's a little bit fiddly. You need to be precise. You need to be on your best marking game, but it's not impossible. But before I do that, I just want to clean up one edge on here so I know it's absolutely dead straight. Then we can get a center line put in and start working from there. Okay, so with that edge established, I've decided that I want this to be the top of the fretboard because there's quite a lot of dark marks on the back face of it. There's some dark stuff down this end, so I'm gonna have this as the nut end and we will lose a fair amount of that. Might be able to sand that out as well. I don't know how deeply it goes in. So first thing we need to do is establish a center line and it doesn't have to be massively precise because this is way, way wider than we ever need it. So that is looking like 78 mil. So that will be 39 mil. On my center. And I'll just set my gauge up to that. And I'm just going to put a couple of marks in at the ends with the gauge. And then we can use those to mark our line in. And I'm going to put my line in with my new toy. Now apparently you can't be taken seriously on YouTube if you're making stuff unless you're using Festool. Festool's a little bit rich for me, but I have got a Festool pencil, which is kind of still just about in my price range. I've actually got a couple of these, this one and another that's not a Festool. I really like them if you haven't seen them. They're like a mechanical pencil, but they've got this two and a half mil thick lead in them. And they also come with a little sharpener, which is quite cute. And they've also got this long barrel so you can get them through stuff and they do work quite well. And they come with interchangeable leads of different colors. So for the first time in a long time, I've actually got a white pencil that works fairly well. So we can use that to put a somewhat thick center line on, but 
at this stage in the game, it doesn't really matter too much. So with that now marked up, we need to jump onto the computer and fire up the fret position calculator and work out our spacings for these frets. And this calculator is pretty easy to use. You just need to feed in the number of frets that you want, what your actual scale length is, what type of instrument it's for, and whether you want your measurements in imperial or metric. And then you just hit calculate and it feeds out the numbers for you. I've used it a number of times without ever having an issue. Okay, so now I've got my numbers, I can start to lay this board out and I've kind of sketched in a notional nut line. It doesn't have to be kind of absolutely accurate at the moment. All I've done is I've left myself enough material to do what I need to do on the other side of the nut. And the first thing I'm going to do, some good old fashioned masking tape and super glue. I'm just going to attach this square to that nut line. So I've got a positive stop I can position my rule against. And for once, I'm not going to use accelerator when I do this because I want a little bit of open time on the glue just so I can make sure everything's positioned exactly where I need it. And then I'm just going to fasten my meter rule down the center line of the board in exactly the same way. And I do recommend that you actually stick your rule in place by one method or another. Because you need it to be absolutely spot on with no movement whatsoever throughout the whole of this operation. And I'm gonna need my big eyes for this job because it is ever so, ever so fiddly. And you really are working to very, very fine tolerances. So I'm just gonna give that a minute to dry up properly and then we can start measuring these out. Okay, so the calculator actually gives you two measurements. It gives you a measurement from the nut, which is of course our square in this instance, and then it gives you a fret to fret measurement. Now obviously for the first one that's going to be exactly the same at 42.768 millimeters. We're always going to be using the measurement from the nut. And the reason we do that is if you use the fret to fret measurements, if you get one ever so slightly out, and then the next one ever so slightly out, and then again, and again, and again, right the way down the fretboard, you're going to end up with a compound error by the time you get to the 21st fret, which could be massive. Doing it the way I'm going to do it, you might have one or two frets slightly out of position. It probably won't make that much difference to the playability of the guitar, as long as you're relatively careful in the positioning of them. And for the first couple of frets, we're helped by the fact that this rule has a half millimeter scale up to 100 mil. Beyond that, we haven't, and it's a little bit more guesstimatey, but we're only guesstimating within the realm of kind of half a mil at most. And the way I do these is I will round them up. So the first one is 42.768 mil. So I would round that up to 42.8 mil. So I'll come to 42, so that's 42.5. And I'm just gonna come in the middle of there. That's left me a little mark. And then I'm gonna set this small sliding square up so I can just make that mark a little bit bigger. So it's easier to see. And then I'm just going to put a tick so I can find it again. So then we can move on to our next one, which is 
83.35. So that rounds to 83.1. So basically, 81.23. Again, I'll just put my knife into that little nick I've made and just extend that with the square a little bit. And I can see these quite well, but I'm still going to put a little tick mark there. And for fret three, we're 121.237. So basically we're 121.2. 121.237. Then we're just going to come a little bit past there. So I'm going to carry on with this, work my way up the fretboard and get the rest of them marked out. Okay, so with all of those marked out, we can now get the, the rule off there. Also remove the square. And I'll grab another square off the rack. And I'm gonna basically start working my way down and marking these knife lines properly. And as always, we need this to be a good positive mark for our saw to go in. But if you try and put it in too deep, too fast, you'll end up slipping and making a mess of it. Or making a mess of your finger, which is probably worse. So we'll go through with a couple of quite light passes and then go in a bit deeper and I've probably showed this to people a million times but to get the best result put your knife right into the first mark you've made slide your square up to it and then start to cut that line in
Okay, so with those all marked in now, we can get this off the bench. And then we can get it into the fret slotting jig and start to get these slots cut in properly. I'm not looking forward to this because this was really difficult to score. And I don't think my fret slotting saw is as sharp as it could be. So this could be quite a lot of hard work. And I've got the mitre box set up. I've just checked with a square and everything is pretty much as I need it to be. So I'm just gonna start at one end with the cut for the first fret. And very gently start working that slot in and as I suspected this wood is hard as all hell and it's taken a bit of cutting but we'll get there and what I'm aiming to do with this cut is just cut part of the way in so I've got a really really good slot that I can work with because when I radius this board we're going to take out quite a lot of the slots that we put in so we'll have to redo them with the guide on the saw so these aren't the final slots by any stretch of the imagination but we do need them to be accurate and we do want them to be fairly deep Okay, so there's all the frets cut in. It took me a little while to do them. This wood is very, very hard. So it took quite a bit of effort to get these cut in. I've been up and down and I've checked with the square and we're all good. They all are nice and square to that center line, which is exactly what we wanted. And I've also remembered to mark more precisely for the nut slot. So next up for this, we need to think about putting a radius in and then we're gonna need some dot markers and trim it down to size before we can attach it to the neck. But all of that is gonna be for the next episode. I'm gonna leave this one here. So as always, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this. Subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.